Hey, y'all, it's Sean Gerber, and part of my CISSP exam questions that I'm putting out there for you so that you can pass the CISSP the first time. And this is uh, episode 16 of my exam questions uh, with put on by Reduce Cyber Risk and by SeanGerber.com. Check me out at Sean Gerber. That's S-H-O-N, Gerber.com. This is domain four, communication and network security. Okay, question one, IEE 802.11G. So that's your Wi-Fi, right? So you're dealing with the frequency range, 802.11G. Uh, that's actually not the frequency range, but it's the, the standard from IEEE. Uh, provides the following throughput. 34 megabits per second using the same 2.4 gigahertz band as 802.11B. 100 megabits per second using the same 2.4 megahertz band as 802.11B. C, using 54 megabits per second using the same 2.4 band as 802.11b, or 108 megabits per second using the same 2.4 gigahertz band as 802.11b. So again, 802.11g, how much throughput does it give you? 34 megabits per second, 100 megabits per second, 54 megabits per second, or 108 using the same frequency of 2.4 gigahertz? And the answer is... C, 54 megabits using the same 2.4 gigahertz band. So uh, 802.11 is a set from IEEE standards that governs wireless network transmission methods. They're commonly used today in all of these different versions. You got 802.11 A, B, C, no, there's no C, A, B, uh, G, N, A, C. These are different versions that are available for wireless connectivity. And so they're, that's part of the whole piece of this is that you'll have to understand for the CISSP, what do each of those bands kind of play into and how much throughput can they put out? Uh, it's very important for you to understand those. Again, we talk about the CISSP P, it's basically a mile wide and inch deep, and this is part of the little inch that you got to kind of know. All right, reference you can find this at wikipedia.org, IEEE 802.11g-2000. Okay, next question is your wired equivalency privacy, WEP, okay, is extremely secure and should be used as much as possible on your Wi-Fi network. I hope you all know the answer to this one. Okay, I, I pray you all know the answer to this one. Okay, WEP is extremely secure and should be used as much as possible on your Wi-Fi network. Answer it, or I should say, A, true, B, false. So is it or is it not? And the answer is B, false. Yes, it is a very insecure protocol right now that is available still, but I, I don't recommend using it. It was basically pre, the precursor to WPA, WPA2, um, and, the, and now there's WPA3 that's actually coming out. And so the thing is with this is it's an encryption protocol available in 802.11, A and B. But once you started getting the standard of WPA, then that started to change and it's now longer available in these other areas. Um, so the, the interesting part about all this, though, is if you don't... I, if you don't have the ability to get WPA for whatever reason, WEP is a good way to at least slow them down a little bit. Um, it does provide, I, I'd say, very little protection, but it, there is something. It's better than just leaving it wide open. Um, but avoid WEP if all possible. And if you have a system that can't do WEP or can't do WPA or one of the other protocols that are higher than that, I'd highly recommend you replacing it because it's just not very secure at all. Uh, so again, one of the, they did have when it was dude. One of the things I thought was interesting with uh, Wiki is said despite the introduction of 256 WEP, 128 bit remains one of the most common implementations. So I wasn't real sure why they stuck with that, but it had to have been probably because of the fact that WEP was uh, was relatively new and that was a, a big factor. Many other things couldn't communicate with it at that point. All right, you can check it out at uh, wikipedia.org, Wired Equivalency Privacy. Okay, next question. Wi-Fi Protected Access 2, WPA2, replaced which of the following security protocols? A, WEP, B, WPA3, C, WPA, or D, SSL? We talked about WEP. Now we have WPA3, WPA, and SSL. So which of the Wi-Fi Protected Access 2, WPA2, replaced which of the security protocols? Answer is... C, right? WPA it makes logical sense. WPA2 did replace WPA, um, which requires testing and certification by the Wi-Fi Alliance and then implements mandatory elements of IEEE 802.11i. Uh, so the big bottom line with that, though, is, is it moved on. The technology changed, and they moved on to WPA2 and then now into WPA3. Uh, basically, it was a certification went from 2004 to 2006, um, and WPA2 certification is mandatory for all new devices that bear the Wi-Fi trademark, which means so it's just like what they did with, wipe, with WEP before, they are moving it away. And this will continue to happen through the maturation, big $10 word, 
of the Wi-Fi world. And Wi-Fi just becomes bigger and bigger all the time. So it's it's to get a lot of emphasis on it. You can check this out at Wi-Fi Protected Access on Wikipedia. Okay, that's all I got for today. You check me out at SeanGerber.com, the CISSP. I've got some great CISSP certification information out there for you. I've got exam questions. I've got study materials. I've got everything that you will need to pass the CISSP the first time. Don't do like I did and fail it the first time. You need to pass it the first time. You also can check me out at Udemy.com for CISSP certifications. That's Sean Gerber. And ReduceCyberRisk.com. You can check me out there with CISSP training. Uh, all that stuff's available to help you pass the CISSP certification. As we all know, it is a bugger and uh, can be quite challenging at times. So that's what we're out there for here to help you pass the thing the first time. All right. Have a great day. We'll catch you on the flip side. See ya. <laughs>